This is what's known as a Titleist Pro V1, and for years now it has been renowned as the number one ball in golf. And for all extensive purposes, this golf ball has been used by some of the world's best players and some of the worst. You see, for me, this is part of the beauty of it. But we have just seen a proposal from the RNA and the USGA on a model local rule surrounding golf balls in elite, sorry, elite competition. Now, as you can imagine, this is quite a big deal. This is a big deal for quite a lot of golfers. And you may think this doesn't involve you. This won't affect you. And a lot of people, you're right, it won't affect you. But there's pros and cons to this. And I think we need to be very careful on exactly what we are going to do when it comes to reining back the golf ball for elite competition. Because the beauty of golf for me, guys, I'm going to get into it in this video. I also want your opinions. And guys, if you disagree with my opinion, that is absolutely fine. I totally respect all of your opinions, but please get them in the comments below because I'm going to sift through them. I'm going to reply to as many as I can, because for me, this is mega interesting and I'm not sure which way we should go. In my head, I have an opinion which is formed on a few facts, it's formed on a few more opinions, and it's formed on a few other people's opinions, which is, yeah, well, uh, yeah. So first of all, what exactly does it mean? What does elite competition mean? What does, oh, 130 yards, nice. What does the whole idea of reining back the ball for certain golfers mean? And who will it affect? So I think this means PJ Tour, DP World Tour. I think it means certain levels of professional, if not all levels of professional golf. And I almost think, yeah, is there a problem with people hitting it too far? Like Bryson was driving greens at Bay Hill. And I mean, he didn't go and win the Masters though, did he? And I'm not sure exactly who the USGA and the RNA are trying to benefit here because it could cause more harm than good realistically. You see, I'm quite lucky that a lot of my friends have gotten into golf since obviously the pandemic and since, well, watching golf on TV. And the beauty of that is I can watch golf with them on TV. And a few of the questions they generally ask, oh, I've struck that so well, I've just pulled it. I'm not going to blame the golf ball, but kick right. It's trying. Now that is a miss green from 130 yards. Imagine if I had to use a uh, rainback golf ball. Well, Part of the beauty of that is for me that I'm a bit of a tech nerd. I'm a bit of a tech guy. I like talking about golf clubs. I love reviewing golf clubs. I like talking about golf balls. I like talking about all things golf. And my friends will ask me, James, what clubs is he using? What ball is he using? Should I use that ball? Should I use those clubs? And most of the time, the answer to that is no. Stay well away from those clubs. You probably need something a little bit different. You probably need a different golf ball. You probably need a golf ball that travels a bit higher, that spins a little bit more. But the beauty of golf is, the option is there. If I want to go and play the old course with a Pro V1 and with the same clubs that Rory McIlroy uses, I can do that. If I want to go and play Hoylake this year's open venue with a TaylorMade TP5, with a Callaway Chrome Soft, with the same clubs that John Rahm uses, the same clubs that Tiger Woods uses, I can just about do that to some extent. If we take that away from people, for me, I mean, I'm going to get into my opinion a little bit more, but I really think golf is in such a good place at the moment. Golf is booming since the pandemic. More and more people are taking it up. There's more and more companies that are making it more affordable for people to buy new golf clubs. There's more and more golf courses offering deals for people to get out and play. Not everyone wants to go and buy the Pro V1, the TP5, the Chrome Soft and all the rest. But for the people who do and the people who want to think I'm going to play the same ball as my hero, why are we going to take that away from them? Just because someone hits it a little bit further than maybe the guys in Blazers would like. Is everyone shooting 55 every week? Because I'm not sure. I'd, I've not turned the tally on and seen that. Golf's about more than distance. Golf's about artistry. It's about short game. It's about putting. It's about knowing your distances and knowing your miss hits and about knowing yourself in here. But yes, golf courses may be getting a little bit too short for the bigger hitters. But again, are people going in shooting 55 each week? I'm not too sure. Guys, I put this post on my Instagram and I had a lot of different replies. And one of them was, golf's getting out of hand, the bigger hitters have an advantage. Now, that's not really an unfair advantage, is it? Because they've been in the gym, they've put distance on, they've got fitter. And those people who have that advantage, surely the rain back of the ball would be a percentage of the rain back. So if you still have more club head speed, you should still have more distance. I mean, if that's not the case, I'm pretty sure that can't be the case, but I'm pretty lost in what people are trying to get here. 
And as you can imagine, this has ruffled the feathers of some of the world's biggest golf brands. A Kushner did put a statement on yesterday, which is when we first saw the announcement from the RNA and the USGA. As you can imagine, they're well against it. They, I mean, they have the biggest market share in golf balls, and a lot of that is down to the Pro V1, and that's down to the marketing of the players. Now, I'm not, this isn't my argument for that. I couldn't really, I could care less, but I'm not really that bothered about one brand and one company's market share. But I do see the ideology of people wanting to play the same clubs as their heroes, the same balls as their heroes. That's filthy, I'm gonna clean it. I think this is just about fair way, but anyway. And the, the other factor is, there's that much going on in the world. There's that much going on in golf, to be honest, at the moment, that is this the biggest problem? Like a lot of people have said, this is an answer to something where there's no real problem. People are trying to create a problem so they can throw in an answer. Like it wouldn't surprise me if maybe the governing bodies had some long plan to then provide the golf balls to people, to then make money for themselves. And again, that's something which I think in my head would make sense down the road they're going. And that's massively like me alleging that that's nothing that I know, but I really don't understand. Like are the big golf companies gonna to want to put R&D into making Go on, go on, please, oh, that ball spun too much. Are they gonna to want to put more money in development into creating totally new golf balls just for the half a percent, the 0.1 of a percent of golfers? When realistically, yes, we know that some of the world's best golfers have had different golf balls in the past, have had left dots, left dashes, right dashes, you know the kind of score there, but they've all had the same recipe. They've all been the same kind of idea. They've never been reined back. Like, do we want technology to go backwards in any form of life? You can probably see where my opinion's based here, and there are arguments for this. So I'm gonna just tell you a few of the arguments for it so you can, if this is the first time you've heard of it, you can base an opinion yourself. Obviously, golf courses are getting a little bit outrun. We're running out of land. You can't just keep adding land to golf courses. That's not feasible, and it's not really good for the planet either. And obviously, technology has come on leaps and bounds over the last 20 years. So that's what the RNA and the USJ are saying. They're saying they're gonna rein it back to around 20 years ago. Now they claim that golfs have picked up about a yard a year. So that's 320 yards down to 300 yards. So effectively you're hitting a nine iron in instead of maybe a gap wedge. Will people just get better with nine irons? Will the scores stay the same? Is that the whole point? Is that the beauty of it? You have to hone your skills more with irons than wedges. And you might think that I'm kind of harping on here, but I remember a comedian, and I can't remember who it was, but he was talking about sports, and he was talking about doping in sports. Obviously, that's not what I'm trying to say here, but he said, if I watch live sport, I want to see the best of the best. If I'm watching the 100 meter sprint, I want to see them set off with the beating heart of a cheetah, the legs of an ostrich, and then when they go over the line, rise from the ashes like a phoenix. Obviously that's a little bit far. I'm not saying I want to see Rory McIlroy with the legs of an ostrich anytime soon, but I don't mind seeing good golf. I like watching the best in the world tear some golf courses apart where possible. Like again, no one's shooting 10 under every round, are they? So if adopted, these changes will take place in 2026 in January. I better get a yardage here as well got away with a par on that last one. So that does give the major brands time to try and develop something, to try and work on something. Obviously they're gonna be working within COR regulations or new regulations. 147 downhill. And it's funny because I think massively, have I got an A time? I've got an A time. I think massively, I would rather them see them battle pace of play. I'd rather see them battle really expensive green fees. I'd rather see them battle equality in golf not something that might go 10 yards too far. That's my personal opinion. You might have a different one. If you have guys, get in the comments below and let me know. But there are two sides to it and I'm trying to stay as impartial as possible, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling to really see the sense behind it. I'm struggling to see how it's gonna make a huge difference apart from divide people even more in a world where, let's face it, golf's pretty divided at the moment. Right, little eight iron. Oh, please be good. Please be good. That is so on it. Oh, it's short. It's short. I must have one of those new balls. I think it's a really interesting concept as well because the golf ball obviously would make a difference with irons, with drivers, with wedges, with everything. It would be a percentage difference. 
Do they then start to look at the drivers? Do they start to say, well, the drivers are going too far? Realistically, that's what the argument is, I think, for the RNA and the USJ, isn't it? I think drives are going too far, leaving people with wedges in. I mean, we changed the groove rules a couple of years ago, and that just feels like normal now, but they changed them for everybody. And that, for me, is where I think we need to look at it. The problem with golf for us mere mortals is we probably don't hit it far enough. We probably don't hit it straight enough. Golf's difficult. And then... We've got a select group of people who've worked their entire lives to master this sport, not that you ever do master it, but to try and get as good as they possibly can, to hit the ball as, as far as they physically can. They've gone in the gym, they're working with physios, they're working with everybody possible to just get that. Look at Matt Fitzpatrick, for example. He's put a gazillion yards on over the course of a season and he's worked his absolute nuts off for it. But now they're saying, oh, sorry, it's going to rain that back a bit. I, I don't know. I don't know, I don't, I, I've got an opinion, but I don't know where it's gonna end. So everybody, I hope this video hasn't been too ranty for you. I hope I've given you a few facts and a few of my opinions and a few opinions of other people as well. I've just been checking my Instagram walking down this hole and more replies are saying, I mean, one reply actually said, golf got too easy for the pros years ago, they're finding it easy, um, right. I don't understand that personally, but a lot of people kind of side in with my idea as well that we can't really understand why they're spending so much time, money, effort into trying to rein the game back. Can I use that slope to bring the ball down here? Said nobody ever, but we're going to give it a go because why not? Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just duff it. Um, we didn't want to use a slope anyway. <laughs> That was a terrible strike. But guys, make sure you get your opinions in the comments below because I'm really interested to see what all of you think. I really appreciate all of your opinions. And guys, smash that subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video. Is this the end of modern day golf as we know it?